Docker. It seems like the tech community can't get enough of it. And if you're like me, you've probably scratched your head at this piece of tech. Well, what is Docker and why should you care? Let's dive straight in. You might be familiar with the infamous, it's working on my machine problem. Your Python code works on your machine, but when someone else tries it, it just doesn't work. Different Python versions, library inconsistencies, it's a developer's nightmare. Docker is an open source virtualization platform that solves this problem by neatly packaging your software so that it can run on any machine regardless of the environment. Virtualization software in itself is nothing new. Before Docker, you had something called virtual machines or VMs for short. The problem was that back in the day, you couldn't install different operating systems on the same piece of hardware. So if you wanted a Windows server as well as a Linux server, you would need two separate pieces of hardware. To solve this, you had something called virtualization where the idea was to install something called a hypervisor on the hardware. With this hypervisor, it would now be possible to share the system's resources across multiple operating systems and it would be possible to install several operating systems on the same piece of hardware. Now, Docker is kind of similar. While VMs virtualize hardware, Docker virtualizes software. So you would install Docker on an existing operating system. And on top of this, you would run something called Docker containers. A Docker container is very similar to a virtual machine. You can think of it as, as an operating system and you would have multiple of these. You can have multiple of these running. Uh, now you may be thinking if it's so similar to a virtual machine, then why use Docker? Well, the answer is very simple. Uh, Docker is very, very fast and incredibly lightweight when compared to VMs. This means that a single system can, can host multiple Docker containers, uh, but only a few virtual machines. Now, there are three components to Docker. First up, you have a Docker file, which is a text file that contains instructions for how to build a Docker image. Next up, you have a Docker image, which is a template um, for running a Docker container. It contains all the files, libraries, and necessary dependencies required to run your application. Uh, the idea with an image is that you 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 build it and you and you push it to a public or a private repository and then someone can download it and rerun it uh, in order to recreate the environment that you ran your application in. A Docker container is simply a running process. So if you Dockerized a Django app or a Flask app, a Docker container would simply be an instance um, of that running Django or Flask app. Today I'll be showing you guys how to Dockerize a Python Fast API app. Fast API is a super fast web framework in Python that you can install with pip. I've already installed it in my virtual environment. Now, if you're following along in this tutorial, I'll just show you guys my directory structure. So I have this app directory and I just have this main.py file and the root, I have this Docker file. So the, the first thing I'll do is I'll just copy over some boilerplate code. This is a simple REST API where you have this uh, root endpoint. Um, that returns that just hello world and then I have this other endpoint here um, and this is not really yeah so I won't be delving too much into this because this is more of a tutorial on docker so once you have this you need something called a, um, a requirements file so I'll just say pip freeze requirements.txt and this is takes all of your dependencies of the python dependencies and puts them in this requirements file and so something we'll be needing for the docker file Cool. So in the Docker file, we begin by, so this is basically a blueprint that tells the Docker engine how to build a Docker image. So we just give it a list of commands that it follows in order. And once it has run through all of the commands, uh, it, it has built a, uh, a Docker image. So we start by using the from keyword and then we say, uh, and, and then we give it the, the name of the base image. So here I'll just say Python like that. And then we give it a colon and then we give it a tag, right? And this would be the version of the Python we wish to use like that. And this could also be anything. So it could be any other version. You can Google this, there's a ton of versions and you can also, so the base image doesn't have to be Python. It can also be, there are a lot of others. There's something called Python Slim, which is like a slimmed down version of Python that you can use if you're in hardware constraints or if you want to limit, uh, like reduce the size of your image. So once we have this, the next thing is to set the work, uh, the working directory. So I'll just use the work, uh, dir command so this is the so this is the folder inside the container that that uh that docker um, that everything so all of this stuff uh, will basically be copied into into this folder so it's just a folder that we're creating inside uh inside the docker container um so i'll just call it i'll call it uh pi docker like that so once we have that we can uh go go ahead and copy over 
uh, things. So copy over our files and resources. So I'll just start by copying requirements.txt like that. And I will say, so this, so this copy command, so it takes a source and a destination. The source specifies the resource and that's the, that's the resource on your host machine. So on your computer and the destination would be then, then be the, the directory inside the Docker container that you want to copy the, the file over to. In this case, we want to copy it over um, to our work directory. So for that, I'll just put a period like that. Um, and once that's been done, um, the next step is to, so this, so, so what we're doing here is we are basically just going through, you know, all the steps that you would normally do if you were to set up a Python project, right? So once you have the requirements, we would naturally install it using pip. So that's what we do here. And um, we use the run keyword for that. So that's the command that you run inside the, uh, inside the container. So we say run uh, pip install our requirements.txt. Um, and what we also need here is a no cache uh, directory. And the reason we need this is because uh, it, it usually helps to, so, it's, so, it, so it tells pip to not use the cache uh, when, when it's on the requirements. And we, we need that because um, it helps to reduce the size of the Docker image because we don't really, because the cache isn't really used um, when we are, uh, when we're building the Docker image. So it helps to reduce the size of the image. So once that has been done, I wonder why this is highlighted like that. So once that has been done, the next step is to copy over everything else. So I'll just copy over whatever is inside my app directory and copy. So again, this is the source and destination and copy that over to, an, to, to my app directory uh, inside the container. Uh, this could also be something else. It doesn't have to be called app. It just makes it a bit easier. Um, so, so at this point, you'll notice that inside the Docker container, you have the directory structure with PyDocker uh, at the root, and then you have an app folder inside that. Um, and then you have uh, the main inside that. So it copies everything over from app to app. Cool. So once that's been done, we expose a, a port. Um, and this is, the, this, this is the port that the container listens on. I um, just need to make sure it's the same as the port here. And it is, so that's fine. So once that's been done, the next final step is to uh, use CMD. This is the first um, like command that gets run once the container is started. And here you would, you, we would, we would run, uh, actually run the application. So I'll just say Python app slash uh, main.py like that. And this is it. This is the Docker file. And the next step is now to actually um, build um, an image using this Docker file. Cool, now to build an image, we just say Docker build and make sure, by the way, make sure that you have Docker installed and running. So once you have that uh, Docker build and then we say T uh, slash T for tag, this makes it easier to, to find the image. Uh, PyDocker, that's the name of the, of the image and then a period that indicates that this is the directory uh, that it needs to, uh, to, to scan to find the Docker file. So I hit enter and we see that it's starting to build the image. Okay, it's done building and you'll see that there are a couple of steps here. So it, it does all of these things uh, in order, right? So you can see it's setting the work directory, it's copying over the requirements file, running pip install and all this. Um, if you run docker image ls, I think, yeah, then you get a list of all the images. So I have a couple of other images here, as you can see, and this gives the name and the tag and an image ID and this tells you when you created the image. Cool. So the image has been created. The next step is to actually run it. For that, we say docker run. And here we say dash p, this gives the port mapping. So in this case, I'll say 80 colon 8000. 80 is the port that is on. So, so it's the port that you are uh, on, on your host machine and, and 8000 is the port that your container is listing on. And this should be the same as the port that's here and also the port that is exposed here like that. So, and then I also give it obviously the name of the Docker image to run. So we'll see that it's now started running. So to access this, I will say um, like that. Uh, so one to seven, zero, zero, one, which is the same as local host, colon 80. And you'll see that we, it, it uh, yeah, it, 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 hit, it hits the endpoint and we see hello world here. Now, just to show you guys, yes, yeah, so there are a couple of things I also want to, extra things I want to show you here. So if I exit this and if I change this, so if I change this to 8,000 and rerun it, 
uh, you'll see, and then go back here, uh, you will see that it is no longer running on port 80, first of all. And the second thing is if I go, so if I go 8,000, then I'll be able to access it. Oh, that does not look right. If I go 8,000, I should be able to access it. There we go. Cool. So one more thing I want to show you guys is that you can also run the container in a so-called de uh, detach mode. So if I say docker run, this is the same as before. And then say pi docker. And if I give it a slash d argument, it's going to run as a separate process. So it's going to free up this terminal for other things. Now I can also, if I copy this over and say docker exec, exec uh, uh, starts a new command. It executes a command inside the running container. If I say exec dash it, uh, it stands for interactive terminal and it essentially opens up a pseudo terminal inside the running container. And if I then give it the name of the container, uh, paste that, and then and then say bash it's going to run the bash command so it's essentially going to open up a a uh, a, a bash terminal for us in the container and allows us to interact with the running container so if i hit enter you'll see i'm in now inside the container and if i say pwd you'll see that it says pi docker which is the working directory we set here and if i say ls it's going to show the app directory as well as the requirements file um, and you can cd into, into this and ls and you'll see main pi, you can go all the way back also and you'll see now I'm at the root and if you go ls you'll see that it gives all the usual um, directories. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, hope you liked it, hope you learned something new. Um, subscribe if you want to, like if you want to and see you guys in the next one.